Hi guys, Hamster here. Wanted to share with you my uh, my BCM 14 5 inch uh, upper. My new uh, carbine upper. I recently uh, had a chance to put together and I've had some time to spend with it. Uh, round count now is about 250 rounds. Uh, so far no issues. Uh, the thing is working extremely well. I am extremely, extremely happy with it. This is a lower I already have, and I have a 20 inch upper with a magnified optic on it, uh, ACOG. So I wanted to have a carbine upper with a red dot. Now the EOTech I had already, so it was kind of collecting dust in the safe, and I decided it needed a better place that it would get more, uh, more work. So I decided to purchase this upper from Bravo Company and uh, I gotta say I'm extremely happy with it. And I'll share with you what I have here and what I've done. So basically I wanted to make a carbine and I wanted I was my goal was to make it as light as possible, short as possible, so overall this gun would be as fast as possible. So everything on here has gone to making this light and fast. Okay, so what do we have here? We have a 14.5 upper, non-NFA. I'll get to that in a minute. Um, I'm running a mil-spec buffer extension. I'm running a CTR Magpul stock. I really like the CTR. It's easy to adjust, locks in, doesn't wiggle, no distraction, good cheek weld. Um, still using the same Mo uh, grip. Um, on regards to the the upper, I gotta say it's a it's a pretty decent upper. Um, the barrel steel is really nice, mil spec, uh, 11 595e uh, mil grade steel, so it's high quality steel. Um, it's got a NATO chamber, so it's chambered in 556. Uh, the bore and the chamber are both chrome lined, and the Bravo Company barrels. This barrel is uh, been high pressure tested and magnetic particle inspected. The barrel came fully assembled um, minus a uh, bolt carrier and charging handle and hand guards. The delta ring was on it, uh, dust cover, forward assist. All you had to do is slap a set of hand guards on it and drop in your bolt carrier and charging handle and you were good to go. Um, the head spacing had been checked at the factory and it had been test fired and the front sight alignment had been checked. So there's nothing really for me to do except drop in my bolt carrier, which made it real nice. And the fit and finish is nice. And the fitment with my Armalite lower is, uh, is very good. Very, very minor play. No more than most typical ARs. So extremely happy. It worked out really good getting another upper and be able to swap back and forth between a rifle and a carbine, between a magnified uh, optic and, and a red dot. Um, it also has uh, an F marked front sight post. I am running the Midwest Intercities Gen 2 drop in hand guards. These are not free float, but I gotta see these are excellent set of hand guards and for the price they're, they're extremely nice. The EOTech is the, is the XPS uh, 2.0 which I've had for a while. Uh, extremely happy with it and I'm back falling in love with it again. Now to keep this gun light for weapon light I still wanted a weapon light but I went with the M300A Surefire Scout. Now it's half as bright as the 600 and the run time is about half. So I got 110 lumen and about a one hour run time. But I run the 600 light on my rifle upper and I run the AFG2 grip also. They're both configured about the same location. So my grip and my muscle memory, my technique is the same whether I'm using the rifle upper or the lower upper. And my sling placement goes in the same location, just uh, at the rear of the handguard on either the rifle or the carbine upper. So for me, uh, using both of them feels pretty much the same. Same grip, same uh, weapon, uh, weapon light, you know, Basically, same uh, sling location, activation of lights the same, grips the same. Like I said, um, for uh, iron sights, 
I have the standard, uh, you know, a, the A style uh, front sight, which I really like, I'm happy with. I was able to get a true co witness with the EOTech and the sights. Um, the rear sight, I went with something a little bit different than most people usually uh, go with. This is another ARMS product. This is the ARMS 40L SP. And the SP stands for uh, same plane. Now this has a large aperture and a small aperture also. Unlike a lot of the um, backup sights, the small aperture and the large aperture usually aren't on the same plane on most sites. And what do I mean by that? The large aperture is usually like a 200 meter zero and the, the small aperture is a 300 meter zero. On this particular site, the, it doesn't matter if you have the large or small aperture up there on the exact same plane, zero is exactly the same. So if I have the, the large aperture up, I go to switch the small aperture, my zero does not change. They're both zeroed exactly the same. So if that's for something I want to do on this especially. I didn't, whether I'm running the just the EOTech or I'm co-witnessing with the irons or I'm just running the irons, I only have one zero on this gun. So it doesn't matter if this is EOTech or I'm doing the irons or the irons with the EOTech. Uh, it doesn't matter if I'm using the large aperture or the small aperture, one zero on the gun. And I chose to do a 200 meter zero on this, which I have found to be extremely, extremely effective. Basically, this gun, um, point of aim and point of impact is never more than the distance from the center of the barrel to the top of the sight up or the same distance down. So for basically for 250 yards, that round stays in basically a five inch pipe from point blank where it starts off about two and a half low, all the way out to 250 yards where it's about two and a half low again. At 25 yards, I think I'm about an inch and an eighth low. At uh, 50 yards, I'm maybe an eighth of an inch high. But basically, I can put that red dot on anything and it will stay with basically, um, you can envision a, a five inch pipe running out 250 yards that round will stay inside that five inch pipe. And why did I choose that? Um, that was one of the things I thought of along with the running the holographic weapon sight was to uh, achieve the fast part. I wanted uh, less thought process involved, if that sounds kind of funny. I wanted to have less decisions to make when making a shot. I figured that would make me faster. If I don't have to think about, okay, at 100 yards, I'm six inches high, I need to hold low. I just wanted to be able to put dot on target press and keep it as simple as possible so I would have less decisions and I would be able to get a quicker shot off. So making the gun lighter, shorter, and then doing things like the zero, um, the same plane aperture, and uh, the EOTech would do everything I could to make this gun fast. Um, I'm running a standard carbine spring right now. And I'm running, a, currently I got the H2 buffer in it. I'm bouncing back and forth between H and H2. I haven't really decided on which one I'm going to run yet. I am using the same lower with my rifle, which is it has a full rifle gas system. And so far, I haven't had any malfunctions. The, the gun cycles fine. It locks back on empty magazine. And I haven't had any issues running a rifle link gas system with an adjustable stock. So that seems to be working quite fine. But uh, if I go back to the H buffer, then the gun will drop back down to um, back down to eight pounds. But currently we're, in this configuration, we're eight pounds, one ounce. Um, I also changed my insert. Since this system here is more dependent on batteries, I have opted to go for the battery insert for Magpul, which holds two uh, C123 batteries because this optic um, is critical on batteries. Since I only get about roughly 500 hours, I know they rated a little higher than that, maybe 600 or more, but I always downplay it a little bit so I know I'm safe. I should be able to get a good 500 hours per battery. Um, so the optic takes one CR123, uh, the flashlight takes one CR123. And again, this is about 110 lumens, good for about one hour. 
and I'm able to carry two batteries on board. Um, that weight is, of course, without the magazine. So, um, so it is uh, eight pounds, one ounce without a magazine. Now, obviously, a magazine or fully loaded magazine is going to add to it. That was with the sling also. So, um, what helped me add reduce that weight was on the barrel profile. I chose to go with a, a government profile uh, barrel. And I got to say, on this upper, I've been real happy with this upper. It does have true M4 feed ramps. And what I mean by that is the, it has the M4 feed ramps cut in the barrel extension and also in the upper receiver. Because uh, the carbine gas system does tend to have a little faster cycle rate. And that does help with the feeding. The only difference that I am running, I'm running the fail zero bolt carrier also in this uh, in this setup. And the only difference I'm running this one and and the uh, and the 20 inch upper is um, I'm running the O-ring on the extractor spring. Um, I have a decent extractor spring with the black insert. But with the carbine, I have also added uh, an O-ring around the extractor spring to uh, just make sure I have a positive extraction. Because sometimes uh, with a shorter gas system, it can be a little more violent the bolt coming back. And so I'm running the, the O-ring to try to improve reliability. Now the Fail Zero, I've been real happy with. It's been easy to clean. It feels a lot slicker, a lot smoother. Um, I have not run it completely dry with no oil. Um, I run it with minimal oil, but I just can't get myself to so far to run with no oil. So I'm running the Fail Zero, which is a good quality bolt. It's very slick, very smooth, very easy to clean. But I am still using a minimal amount of oil on it. To uh, I th it just can't it can't hurt to run run oil. I'm not running it as wet as I used to with the standard bolts, but I still do run a slight amount of lubrication even with the Fail Zero. So that is my Bravo Company. Um, basically 14.5 upper um, and how this is uh, a non NFA upper is uh, the flash hider that they're had put on this is an A2 style they call this the A2X it looks virtually identical to an A2 flash hider till you put them side by side and then you'll notice that this is about maybe a little about about an eighth inch longer so it's about an eighth inch longer than a standard A2. And then they have a uh, pin and welded this. And the weld is visible, but it's not really bad. So you can see where the, it's been pinned. It has been welded. So if anybody has a concern, you go look, it's welded. Um, it does not interfere. If you want to place a bayonet on, um, it's, it's pretty nice that it doesn't interfere with the, put, placing the bayonet on. So it would make it a little more difficult to do maintenance but um, in my state, they do not allow SBRs. So this is my way of uh, saying, uh, uh, screw you, I'm going to have an SBR. I just got the flash hider pinned. So if you're looking for uh, a new upper, or you want to have uh, more than one upper for a, for a lower, uh, the Bravo Company stuff seems to be pretty good. Uh, this one also, I'm running the Gunfighter charging handle. I'm extremely happy with it. It's a, it's a Mod 4, which is the medium latch, which I find to be works great for me to catch my finger on, but it doesn't get inter, interfere with any of my equipment. Um, real happy with the bad lever from Magpul. Uh, it makes uh, mid, mid, uh, manipulating the weapon uh, much, much easier. Reloads and malfunction drills. It's, uh, it's a blessing to have that there. But this is my new carbine upper. Um, it's light, it's fast, and uh, so far I'm real happy. Like I said, round count's still only about 250. I need to get out and spend some little more time with it, but we're getting close to the point where I can say um, it's reliable and, and I trust it. But uh, the EOTech and the combination, running it in co-witness and the same plane uh, apertures, I was going to say this is just fantastic. I'm able to get hits on target at 100, 200 yards so fast, so quick, either with the irons or with the with the with the with the red dot. It's it's just, it's just fantastic, fantastic setup. But uh, if you're looking to go light and short, I said this is about as light and short as you can go 
without a lot of special paperwork and a lot more cost. But this is the 14.5 the uh, upper carbine length gas system from uh, Bravo Company. And uh, I gotta say, it's got a permanent home here at my location. Thanks for watching.